Hello. In this series of videos, we are going to take a little deeper look into the meaning and the origins of time. Well, we aren't going to go all the way back to the Big Bang, although I am putting a link in the description to my simplistic explanation as to why we can't say what was there before the Big Bang. Anyway, in this video, we're going to explain the reasons why we divide time into its various segments, and also why we call them by those names. Then, in later videos, we will look at the origin and the meaning of watches and clocks, of dawn and twilight, and noon and evening. I will put a link to those as well as soon as they come out, or alternatively, you can subscribe and hit the bell to be notified when they are posted. Hello, my name is Alex, and this is The English and Ear, where we look into what people say in English and why they say it. It seems quite amazing, but the Earth turns on its axis in almost exactly 24 hours, a number that seems so magical that it can be divided by itself, 12, 8, 6, 4, 3, 2, and 1, which also means we can divide time into smaller and smaller sections. But a day is not exactly 24 hours, it is precisely 23 hours and 4 minutes. A year has 365.25 days. And therefore, every year we need to add an extra day in February. This year is called a leap year in English because every day on the calendar will leap or jump a day. Christmas that falls on a Monday one year will leap two days forward in a leap year. But to understand why we use 60 as a division of an hour or a minute, we have to take a ride back 5,500 years to visit the ancient Sumerians who were using the sexagesimal system, which is counting in 60s, for mathematical and astronomical purposes. They realized that the number 60 could be subdivided by 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 12, 10, 15, 20, and 30, which is more numbers than, say, 100. That is only divisible by 2, 4, 5, 10, 20, 25, and 50. It therefore just seemed more logical. The word second comes from the Latin secunda pars minuta, excuse my pronunciation, this is translated as the second diminished part or the smaller part of the hour. The first smaller part of an hour was, of course, the minute or the pars minuta prima. The word hour comes from ancient Greek, aura, and many years ago could mean any period of time, an afternoon, a month, or even a season. If you think about it, early man had no need to divide the day into, into hours, but nighttime and daytime, and maybe when the sun was rising or setting or at its highest point in the sky. Often the days got shorter or longer throughout the year, so it wouldn't really mean much for someone to say 7 p.m. Imagine a caveman telling his teenage cave children who were going to a spit roast and then the trendiest cave club, that they had to be home by seven or the wolves might catch them, if it actually got dark at four. It was the church that organized it a bit better, at least in English, and had certain times of the day and the night that they needed to pray. So the 12 canonical hours were created, such as matins, prime, and vespers, as well as nonis or nonis, which will become important in a later video. Weeks. Why on earth does a week have seven days? Who decided that this would be a good idea? Many would say that God came up with this arbitrary number, but historians would look to the Babylonians and the earlier Sumerians, who loved their astronomy and were able to observe and venerate the seven heavenly bodies that they could see at that time. This would be the sun, the moon, 
Mars, Mercury, Jupiter, Venus, and Saturn. More about those in another video as well. It isn't clearly known the origin of the word weak, but it is thought to mean a, a turning point or a change, which may have denoted a change in the time or period, but no one really knows. Months. This comes from the Old English monath, meaning related to the moon, one of the 12 subdivisions of the year. Years. We know that this is Germanic in origin, and it is thought to mean that which makes a full circle. One of the most interesting yearly clocks can be found at Stonehenge in the UK. This 5,000-year-old prehistoric monument is aligned exactly to the rising sun of the summer solstice and the opposing sunset of the winter solstice. It looks like we are out of time. Get it? Well, if you have any questions or doubts or requests, please leave them in the comments section below and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.